Okay, so I'm going to quickly go over the timer counter functions um, in chapter, chapter 12. Okay, so first thing is we've already gone through the real time interrupt. Okay, I got to assume you know how that works, how it causes interrupts, how you have to clear the flag in TFLG2, how you have to enable the interrupt using TMS gate 2. Okay, now we're going to look at the output counter timer, OC 1 through 5. Okay, so you got to know about theory of timed events and output compare. So, timed events. Uh, what we're going to be able to do is using OC 1 to OC 5, we can control specific port A pins. See, port A, uh, pin 7 is controlled by OC, OC 1 only. Pin 6 controlled by OC2, pin 5 controlled by OC3, pin 4 controlled by OC4, and pin 3 controlled by OC5. Okay, so there's uh, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are dedicated to specific port A pins, where OC1, as you can see, can be assigned to any of them, any of 7 through 3. Okay, so OC2, 3, 4, and 5 are dedicated. OC1 can be assigned to any pin, any of these pins on port A to control it. Okay, so this is a basic timing system. We looked at the real-time interrupt, and now we're looking at TCNT. TCNT is controlled by this prescaler. You can divide by 1, 4, 8, or 16 to slow it down. Slow down the frequency by default. Uh, divide by 1, that's what we're going to use. It's a 2 megahertz tick rate, or you actually say 500 nanoseconds per tick of TCNT. It constantly counts and rolls over. It's a 16-bit counter, so it rolls over after 65,536 uh, counts. It rolls over, it becomes zero again. Fires this TOF, but we're not using that. We are just using TCNT as a counter timer. Okay, so there's TCNT. It's a 16-bit thing, so it's got two addresses. You always reference 1000 and E, the high bit. And you would use a 16-bit register like D, accumulator D. Okay, TFLG2, we already looked at that because we studied the real-time interrupt flag and the mask enable bit. Okay, and how you clear flags? You clear flags by storing a 1 in the corresponding flag bit. Okay. All right, we did that with a real-time interrupt. Uh, here's TFLG1, which is the one we're going to be working with today because it's used with the TOC 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You can see those five bits there. And there's corresponding mask bits for interrupts. So each one of those five counters has its own interrupt. Okay, we're not doing input compare, so let's skip over to 12.4. 12.4. There we go, output compare. So we're going to be using output compare, which controls bits on port A. We already looked at the bits, how they work. Okay, so here's the way the timer works. Okay, here's TCNT. It's constantly ticking at a 500 nanosecond tick period. Every 500 nanoseconds, it counts up. One more count. Okay, and there's five comparators. One, two, three, four, five. Each one comparing TOC one, two, three, four, and five. TOC5 is different. It's shared between input and output. We're just going to look into output, so just O5. TOC4, TOC5. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So in the example we look at, we look at TOC2 because it is wired to PA6, port A, PA6. And that's the LED on the board, right? PA6 is the LED. So that's the one that we can see flashing easily. So TOC2... There's a comparator for TLC2 that always compares with TCNT. When these two numbers match, it fires the event. The event is, it sets a bit in, in TFLG1, right? It sets that bit corresponding to TLC2. And if the mask bit is, in a, is set, it will fire an interrupt for TLC2. And depending on this register, the timer control register, it will control a bit on port A. So depending on the bits in this register, it controls a bit in port A. And the way they work, 
TCTL1 works in bit pairs. Um, how can I look at these? So where is it described? So you have to find out where TOC TCTL1 is, is described. I guess that was it. Okay, here we go. This is, T, this is the description on page 282 of TCTL1. Okay, these two bits, OM2 and OL2, are used for OC2 and TOC2 to control port A, bit 6, pin 6. Okay, if they're both zeros, doesn't do nada, nothing. Doesn't do anything to port A, pin 6. Okay, if it's a 0 and a 1, it will toggle. PA6 every time it fires, every time the two numbers match, every time those two 16-bit numbers match, right, in the comparator, it'll toggle port A bit. Okay, maybe you want the bit to go low only when it fires. Like if you're doing pulse width modulation, you have to use two counter timers and, and, and OC2 will make it go low. So in that case, you'd want a 1 and a 0 in these two bits. Okay. And if 1-1, one, one, that will cause it to set PA6. Okay? So they work in bit pairs. So there's one for TLC2, TLC3, TLC4, TLC5. Okay? To control the corresponding bit on port A. All right. Once you get past that, then you look at the special one, the uh, OC1. He's different than all the other guys. OC1 is different than OC2, 3, 4, and 5. OC1... You can be assigned to any of those five port A pins, right? And the way it works is it uses OC1M and OC1D to determine which port A bits will be affected. So the mask bits specify which port A bits will be affected. And the data bits, the D bits, determine whether the port A pin will go high or it will go low. Those are the only top options you have for OC, TOC1. See, TOC1 is different. It doesn't have the toggle option. It can only make port A pin go high when the timer matches or when the timer fires, or it can go low when the timer fires, okay? So that's it. So you have to understand that in order to understand how the output counter timers work. Like, like the real-time interrupt, they have a flag bit that has to be cleared. So for TOC2, you got to clear this bit. So to clear that bit, you would load a hex 40 into accumulator A and store it in uh, TFL G1, right? And that would clear this bit. You have to do that in the interrupt service routine. I'm not going to talk about interrupt service routines because we already, already talked about those as far as how they work. However, to cause a delay, which is what this is all about, like if you wanted to cause a... 50 microsecond delay. Let's go back to the timer logic. If you want to cause a 50 microsecond delay, you would load this value, the current value right now, add 50 ticks, add 50, and store it in TOC2. So that this is in the future, and this is right now. This is the value right now. This is, we add 50, so it's 50 ticks into the future. So it would take 50 ticks. 5,500 nanosecond ticks. Did I say that right? No. If I want 50 microseconds, the 50 nanosecond ticks, if I want 50 microseconds, I'd have to go add 10, right? 10, 500 nanosecond ticks is 50 nanoseconds. If I want, yeah, yeah. 50 nanosecond. Is that right? 50, no, 500 nanosecond. Okay, what's 500 nanoseconds times 10? 5 microseconds. If I wanted 50 microseconds, I'd have to go 100 ticks. So if I wanted a 50 microsecond delay, I would load this value, I would add 100, and I'd store it in TOC2, 100 decimal. Because 100, 500 nanosecond ticks is 50 microseconds. I think I got that right. I hope I got it right. Anyway, that's it. So hopefully you get it.